Good morning. Vice President Dahoudi, distinguished scientists, ladies and gentlemen, it's really truly a pleasure to share with you our efforts at Weill Cornell Medical College in terms of contributing to local research capacity. About two and a half years ago in the spring of 2008, while graduating our first class, we decided that although we had been planning for the research program for a couple of years, it was time to start implementing and achieve the second of our tripartite mission, which was research. The objective is to create a center of excellence and recruit outstanding scientists, create a world-class infrastructure, and start addressing the medical problems of the Qatari population. We are inspired in this by the vision of Her Highness, and uh, nothing is more apt than this quote, and I quote here, I firmly believe that the optimal investment of our resources should not turn us into consumers of knowledge. It should encourage us as well to produce knowledge, and that's exactly what this Biomedical Research Center of Excellence is aiming to do. This is, I promise, the only complicated slide I'll show, but it is at the core of my presentation. You have to see on the left-hand side, actually, let's start. Oh. All right, it's here. So at the center is the core of our strategy, which is bench to bedside to community, starting with fundamental research, look at clinical applications, and then from the findings, begin to inform the public policy to change people's behavior and impact the health of country population in a very broad fashion. On the left-hand side here, we have five approaches. So it's a multi-pronged approach five components. To begin with, we have established advanced research infrastructure support. We are also developing targeted building capacity, capacity building strategies. At the center of this multi-pronged approach is this, our ability, our intention, and now our ability to recruit world-class scientists and then retain them for long periods of time. We have also established both local and international collaborations with openly sharing knowledge and data. And finally, we have training programs to strengthen human capital. Let me just share a little bit more detail about each of these strategies. So we have now established both wet and dry labs. We also have shared use platforms, genomics, proteomics is coming on board. We have a biostatistical core, we have computational biology core, all those are functioning. We also have a research administration which is fully functioning with all the functions, grants, contracts, compliance, etc. In terms of capacity building initiatives, we have pilot projects which we fund in-house, those innovative ideas which might not be ready for prime time as yet, but where we can give some money initially to those scientists who are very creative, who can gather data and then apply for the NPRP programs funded by QNRF, which was shared here by Dr. Howdy this morning. We do have a program to transfer knowledge here, led by Dr. Ron Crystal, who is the chair of the Department of Genetic Medicine in New York. Several projects, which over a period of five years, will transfer the know-how and the knowledge and identify local scientists and mentor them. And that process has already occurred in the last two years and is halfway there. We, in the last two years, two funding cycles, we have obtained 33 grants from NPRP, from QNRF mechanism. We are participating in the Qatar uh, Science Leadership Program that Dr. Howdy mentioned this morning. And I will be advertising our first large scientific conference very soon, which is going to become a biannual event. We do have very strong local relationships. Dr. Hanan has left, she had to leave, uh, but she and I are working on uh, multiple ways to continue to strengthen our relationship. 
Same thing with Sidra Qatar University, Shfala, Supreme Council of Health, with my colleagues at uh, CMU and uh, working very closely with both Dick and uh, Mark at TAMU in terms of collaborations, both at individual faculty levels as well as systems levels and other EC institutions. And we have close to 50 international partners now. On the right-hand side, in terms of deliverables, we hope to deliver within the next three years. It's a five-year plan, two years have passed. Within the next three years, starting before, we hope to deliver. Actually, I jumped a little bit. So we do have some training programs also for clinical investigators, for our medical students, as well as science administrators. We hope to uh, initially focus on most common illnesses. Dr. Abdullah Ali Howdy uh, touched on them. Dr. Zirhuni did also. Diabetes, primarily obesity and cardiovascular syndrome and associated complications, and neurosciences, really. And finally, as Sidra comes on board and uh, there is a program, maternal fetal medicine, both at Sidra as well as an extension at Hamad, we will be putting longitudinal studies over there. Our other goals are, in terms of achievables, we have been having discussions with Dr. Tidu Maini in terms of uh, our faculty uh, using their discoveries to file patents and then exploit their commercial applications. And in a, a small way, but in a very consistent way, we are contributing to Her Highness's dream of uh, converting Qatar into a knowledge-based society by producing physicians and also by a medical workforce, science administrators. In a second, I will show you a video from two candidates who have come to Walconnell Medical College as part of the training program. I joined Walconnell because of its excellent uh, research, biomedical research program, and I wanted to get more training on my field. In the research department, I work in the genomics core where we use advanced technologies um, like studying different levels of gene expression related to different diseases such as uh, diabetes or breast cancer. I hope to begin my master's in January, after which I'd like to, be, uh, to become a director of a research lab. Uh, and one day I'll become the Minister of Health to establish and promote uh, hi the high standards I learned here in Cornell uh, in healthcare and research. I joined Wild Cornell uh, because it was part of my QSLP training. Um, uh, currently, I am uh, interning in the research administration office, uh, having tasks related to the research compliance, uh, accounts and uh, grants, uh, typical day-to-day -day activities, and also uh, working in real-life uh, projects. Actually, my uh, experience here in Wild Cornell uh, have, has equipped me with uh, valuable experience and uh, tools uh, uh, to carry on with me to the next uh, rotation step. I hope to join one of the, the Qatar Foundation research centers that recently ha ha have been established. We recently established a center for diabetes, obesity, metabolic syndrome, and cardiovascular disorders. We will be organizing first large international conference in March of 2011. I'll get back to the center in a second, but let me just share with you a little bit about uh, building human capacity. You can see from fiscal year 2008, in the last three years, we have grown quite a bit. We are up to almost 75 people working in the research program. Of these 37 people who are working as uh, technology specialists in our laboratories and running our laboratories now, and many of them are also part of the Qatar Science Leadership Program and going to the graduate school. These are the people who really are the future of this country. 36, fully 36 out of 37, are local Qataris. You can see on the left-hand side, there in the blue, we have 15 research faculty members, about 10 of them uh, re recruited in the last two years from very prestigious places like Columbia, Baylor College of Medicine, Max Planck Institute, uh, Cleveland Clinic, Cornell itself, 
and on and on. And we have been able to attract truly world-class scientists now. Very briefly, in terms of uh, the specific initiatives, we started with the initiative from New York, whereby three of our distinguished faculty members got involved, Dr. Ron Crystal, Dr. Elizabeth Ross, and Dr. Rafi, who identified, helped us recruit, respectively, faculty members locally here, and have been mentoring them, talking to them once a week on a video conference, and as well as establishing a local team here, and we are halfway there. We have had a summer research fellowship whereby uh, 24 of our top students, 12 from the pre-medical and 12 from medical program, go on to go to uh, Ithaca. The pre-medical ones go to Cornell University, and the other 12 go to Weill Cornell Medical College in New York every summer for eight to 10 weeks to gain research experience. In the last two, three years, we have also started, since I, we started establishing labs here, we have invited students here to spend summers there, those who cannot go to either New York or Ithaca, and we typically have about 20 medical interns participate every year. Uh, I mentioned the QNR program. We uh, obtained 33 grants in the last two years, last two cycles from QNRF. We are participating, as I said, in the Qatar Science Leadership Program. You saw the, you heard from the candidate, one of the candidates. We have had a total of eight countries now go through it. Uh, going forward, we will formalize this program even more so and work very closely with our colleagues in Qatar Foundation. I mentioned about the conference upcoming in March 2011 on diabetes, metabolic syndrome, and obesity. Uh, another way of conceptualizing what we are trying to achieve here really is basically like a pipeline. We bring in these pre-medical students and medical students, and then we get them involved right in the beginning, the pre-medical years, in the undergraduate research education program and other student summer fellowships. Actually, in the last year or so, we have been going even deeper in the school, but that's another story for another time, which is to bring in the ninth, 10th grade students and work with them during summer on their science and math to help them get to Wild Cornell Medical College. From pre-med and med, then we have our graduate students coming from the Q Qatar Science Leadership Program, and we will be having graduate school there, inshallah, very soon ourselves. And junior faculty members who get involved with uh, investigators from New York and also apply for their own NPRP and YSREP grants. I talked about the pilot projects in the conference. You can see we are very close to completing this cycle once our uh, recent graduates start coming back after their residency trainings. And uh, once some of the QSLP graduates come back after their PhDs, they will get on faculty and you will complete the cycle here. It will become very organic. Within two, three years, we will get there. I was talking about international collaborations. We have about 48 PIs at this time all over the world, from North America to Europe to Africa to Japan and Australia who are collaborating with us on multiple grants. Last year, we demonstrated that we could do deep genome sequencing. We started with the date palm, Joel Mullick here and his team, along with our associate dean for research, Dr. Khalid Machaka. You can see the team here. We have since gone on, and uh, Dr. Ron Crystal will be presenting later today the Qatri genome and uh, what we, he has found in terms of deep sequencing and as well as looking at genetic variations. In terms of scientific output, you can see our publications and conference appearances are going up in the last three years. However, we really are after quality. And what you see here last year, one publication, PNAS, uh, just an example. This is uh, the role of calcium metabolism in maturation of oocytes, Dr. Khalid Machaka and his colleagues. And this, will be, uh, this work will be very important as we set up IVF clinic at SIDRA. And uh, Dr. Ron Crystal's uh, group looking at the population genetic structure of Qatar, which he'll be presenting later today. Let me get back to, uh, in the last two minutes, to the uh, DOMS, or Diabetes Obesity Metabolic Syndrome Center that we have recently established. Those of you who are clinical investigators know that it is much more difficult to establish clinical research. It is uh, difficult, but still easier to establish basic fundamental research because you control all the variables. However, we are ready to go from bench to bedside. And as part of that, Dr. Hanan and I have been talking, discussing, and working on a plan whereby we will be bringing in clinical investigators from outside who will be uh, placed at Hamad 
and as part of this diabetes metabolic center. But let me give you an example as to where we want to be within the next two years. On the left hand side, you can see these are our current basic science projects, the top two basic, basic science, role of endoplasmic reticulum in the development of diabetes, Dr. Maselli, she's a professor biochemistry here. Second one is effect of glucose toxicity on vascular and beta cell function, Dr. Triggle, Chris Triggle, he's again a professor in pharmacology here. Then the next two are two translational projects, again ongoing at this time. Dr. Tim McGrath looking at factors associated with bariatric surgery as cure for type 2 diabetes. It works, everybody knows. No one knows how it works. So he wants to investigate that with the team here, with Dr. Khalid Mchaka and colleagues. Then I already mentioned about the genetic variability and susceptibility to type 2 diabetes that Dr. Ron Crystal and his colleagues are working on and will be presenting later on today. Once we get these clinical investigators in the next 6 to 12 months, they will be very involved in clinical interventions coming up with uh, applications of what the fundamental research finds, but they will also begin with the first ever gene therapy study in uh, diabetic retinopathy, which will be conducted here under the leadership of Dr. Ron Crystal and Dr. Don D'Amico, who is the chair of ophthalmology in New York. Moving on, I think once we get this part under control, which will take another year or two, then moving on, we already have put in place the components of a very strong public health program. Recently, I established a uh, center for public, global and public health. Dr. Ravi Mamtani is going to lead this. He is from New York University, and he's already having weekly discussions with Dr. Sheikh Mohammed in public health arm of Supreme Council of Health to look at certain projects as to which needs to be started first and which, which comes second, but initially they'll be focusing on diabetes and motor vehicle accidents. Secondly, there are also discussions underway for a true comprehensive epidemiological study which will look at the prevalence and risk factors for diabetes and then identify and do, of course, a genetic analysis and extend the work that Dr. Ron Crystal and his colleagues have done to look at genetic variability in local populations and identify those who are at risk. This will really complete the cycle of biomedical research. So it's not only the bench, it has to be bedside and then back to the community and then back again. In summary, I will just remind you of this picture, the complicated one, multi-pronged strategy, five strategies to produce capacity, all of them in action at this time. Major core, bench to bedside to community and back and on the right-hand side, deliverables, which we are already beginning to demonstrate. Finally, a little plug-in for our first international conference I was talking about in diabetes, metabolic syndromes, March 14th to 16th, right here in Doha. Several hundred scientists from all over the world and from the region will be there as speakers. So you are welcome to come and join us, and please do come. Thank you so very much.